Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create a class to handle scene loading. Let's begin. So this is what we're trying to create. We start off with a very simple basic main menu. We have a play button. When we click, it loads a loading scene, displays loading and a progress bar, and when it is finally loaded, it loads our target scene. And here we got a button to go back, and so on and so forth. So the loading scene works perfectly fine. All right, so let's get to it. Let's start off by making a loader class. So we go in here, we create a new C Sharp script and call this the loader. This will be the class that handles all of the level loading. So in here, let's get rid of mono behavior and make this a static class. That means we can only have static methods and fields. We cannot instantiate this class, which for a loader class is exactly what we want. So let's start off with a very simple load function. So we make a public static void load. And inside we're going to use the function scene manager dot load scene. This function is inside the using unity engine scene management. All right, so this is the function that allows us to load a particular scene. So in here we need to know the name of the scene we want to load. So instead of using strings all over our code, let's use an enum instead. So in here, make a public enum for our scenes. Now let's see the name of our scene. So here it is in the project files. You can see that this scene is called the game scene. So let's add that value. Now in the load function, we receive a scene value and we use that scene value to load it. And we simply do it a to string. That way our code is dealing with a very nice enum instead of just strings all over the place. So now we have this function that is very simple and we can call. So here in my testing scene, I have a button in the UI. So let's use that. It contains this script. So in here we can go into this function to go into the unloader class and call the unload function. And we pass in the scene for the game scene. So essentially clicking on the button should reload this current scene. We will later obviously make this go into the main menu and then have another button to go to the game scene from the main menu. But for now, just for testing, let's simply reload the current scene. Now this button is using the button UI class, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. It's just a very simple button class that handles buttons in the UI. So when we click on the button, we execute this function, which executes this code, which loads the current scene. All right, so let's see if our scene does indeed reload when we click on the button. Okay, so here we are. This is the game scene, just has a rotating sprite. And if I click on the button, it should reload this scene. So I click on it and yep, everything is frozen. The scene is loading and the scene has correctly reloaded. So loading is working correctly. However, while loading, one issue that you can see is that the game hangs on the current screen while loading. We want to have a proper loading screen being displayed while the scene is loading. Otherwise, the player might think that the game has crashed. So let's do that. We're going to create a new scene. This will be our loading scene. Now in here, let's just set up our UI. So for that, let's just simply create a new text object. So just like that, it automatically created a canvas with a event system. So here, let's just set up this text field to say loading and put it on the corner. So this is what the loading scene looks like. We just have a black background just saying loading. So now in order to use this, let's go into our loader class. And in here, let's add another scene value for the loading scene. And before we load our target scene, let's first load the loading scene. So we load in here the scene.loading. And now in order to test this, we need to go in here, go into file, build settings, and we need to add all our scenes in here, otherwise the unloader code will not work. So let's drag the game scene, the unloading, and the main menu, which we will later use. All right, so let's go back into the game scene in order to test out our button. So here I am again in the scene, click the button, and as you can see, it's loading and it reloaded the same scene, but it did not show the unloading scene. So let's go into the code to see why that happened. So here we are in the code and the reason we didn't see the unloading screen is right here in these two lines. These two lines follow one another. So as soon as the unloading scene finishes loading, it immediately starts loading the target scene. Now the screen only refreshes on update. So if there's no update, there's no refresh. 
So what we need to do is let it run for at least one update in order to refresh the screen and then we can load our target scene. So for that let's create a script that will call a function on the first update. So let's go here, create a new C Sharp script and let's call this the loader callback. In here let's have a simple private ball called is first update and default it to true and then we simply do a private void update and if this is the first update then we set it to false and we need to call a function on the unloader class. Alright so just like that we have this script which will call this function exactly after the first update. So let's create that function, go into the loader and here make a public static void loader callback. All right, so we have this function being called after the screen refreshes. Now we can use this to load our target scene. So in order to do that, let's use a delegate to store the action we're going to execute. So let's go here, make a private action for the on loader callback. A action is just a delegate that returns void. So when we get the on loader callback function being triggered, we test if this one is not null. We call it and then we set it to null. Okay, so now all we need to do is put the target scene loading code inside our loader callback action. And just like that. Now obviously we want to load only after we set that, so do that and that. Alright, so that's pretty much it. When we call the unload function, we give it the target scene that we want to load, we set the action to load that target scene, and then we start loading the unloading scene. When the loading scene gets finished loading, it will fire this function, and this function will execute the loader callback, which will start loading the target scene. So that way we have a refresh of our screen between loading the unloading and loading the target. Now all that remains is to add the loader callback script into an object, so here let's go into the unloading scene and here create a new game object for the unloader callback and we simply drag our script. And just like that everything should be working and we should now be able to see the loading scene while the target scene is loading. Alright so here we are in the game scene, now let's see what happens when I click on the button. And yep there you go there's the loading scene, now it's loading and when it finishes loading it refreshes with our target scene. Alright great, so everything is working exactly as intended. Now let's make it load between the main menu and the game scene instead of just reloading this same scene. So here all we need is on the game scene UI, instead of loading the game scene this one goes back into the main menu, so we need to go onto the scene list to add the main menu scene. And on the main menu we have pretty much the same code and we do loader.load and in this case we unload the game scene. Alright so now let's start off at the main menu and scene. Okay, so here we are in the main menu with just a simple play button, I click on it, there's the loading screen, and yep, there's the final scene being correctly loaded. Click on the main menu, there's the loading, and it immediately jumps into the main menu. Alright, everything is working exactly as intended. So if all you want is a very simple loading screen, then this code will do perfectly fine. Now we can try improving our loading by creating a loading bar. However, whether that loading bar works or not will depend very much on how your target scene is set up. If you have your target scene with lots of prefabs and lots of models with many different textures, then Unity might be able to break it into pieces and show the loading bar correctly. However, in this case, the code I have for testing the loading, as you can see it stays in here for about 2 seconds and loads, the code that I have in here doesn't actually get broken up by Unity, so by implementing the loading bar we won't actually see it working. But still, let's go over the code to see how it's done. So let's go into the unloader class. And here, instead of having the unload scene function, we can use the unload scene async function. This lets us load the target scene asynchronously, which means the game supposedly stays active while it loads in the background. Now this function returns a async operation object, which will contain the unloading state. And according to the Unity documentation, the right way to use it is with a coroutine, so let's create that. Now in order to have a coroutine, we must have a function that returns a i enumerator, so let's make that.
and inside this function is when we're going to load the target scene which returns a async operation object so up here we're going to use load scene async instead of the scene manager okay just like that however we want to start this as a coroutine and again in order to start a coroutine we need an instance of a script that extends mono behavior and in this case our loader class is static and doesn't use mono behavior so we cannot just start the routine using this class so we need some sort of dummy object with a dummy component so let's do that simply go in here make a private class let's call this the loading mono behavior and we extend mono behavior and we simply leave it completely empty again this is just a dummy class so now here in our load function we can create a loading game object then we add the component for our loading mono behavior and now we can use that loading mono behavior to start a coroutine and we're going to start it using these parameters so this is really one of the reasons why i don't like using coroutines since it requires such a complicated pattern in order to make them work but in this case let's follow what the documentation says and use it exactly as it is so right now we have this function being executed as a coroutine, which means it runs over several frames. So for example, we can put a yield return null right on the beginning, and that way this will go past one frame before starting the loading. Then we start loading and we get the async operation object. And now in here we need to do a while. So we do a while async operation dot is done. So we do a while it is not done. While it is not done, we're simply going to wait for the next frame. So we do a yield return null. And when it is done, it will exit this and load the target scene. And that's pretty much it. Now, again, this code might seem confusing, but that's really just because of how coroutines work. And in reality, it's actually very simple. So now that we have this code working and loading our scene asynchronously, we need to also have a function that will return the progress of that scene so we can later apply it to our bar. So we can make a function here, a public static float, which will return the loading progress. And in here, we're going to need information from the async operation. So let's store it as a variable. And here, if it is not null, then we return the async operation dot progress. And if it is null, we simply return one up. All right, so we have this function which will return a value between zero and one containing the progress of our loading. So now all that remains is setting up the loading bar in the editor. So let's go in here into our loading scene and let's quickly create a very simple bar. So here we have a very simple bar. It is just an image. Inside I'm using the texture, which is a simply white one by one texture. I'm only adding that so I can access the image type. So we can use the filled image type, fill it from horizontal from the left side. And now we have in here this nice value, the fill amount, which we can set between zero and one in order to easily display our loading progress. So now let's write a very simple script to handle this bar. So we create a new C-sharp script. This will be the loading progress bar. And in here, all we need to change is the fill amount. So let's first grab a reference to our image. And on the private void update, we simply set the image dot fill amount and we ask the loader class to get the loading progress. And that's it, that should do it. So let's test. So here's the main menu and now when I click, yep, there's the unloading screen and the unloading bar which was 90% filled. And now here we are on the final game scene and everything worked. Now again, go back to the main menu and it worked, go back in that one and it is working exactly as intended. Now, however, as I said, I'm not sure how Unity breaks the scene apart to load piece by piece, but it only seems to work on some cases. So in this case, you see the bar go from empty directly to 90% before loading the final scene. The code is all correctly working, but the smoothness of the loading bar will depend on how your target scene is set up. 
So there you have it, we created the unloading scene with the unloading bar for our game. It displays the unloading progress while being very easy to use. Adding more scenes is just a matter of adding another value to the enum and everything works perfectly fine. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.